On this episode of Geekscape Presents Game Time, we sit down with Melinda Prevost. Melinda is a hockey player who lives with type 1 diabetes and is a recent graduate and hockey player for Concordia University. Enjoy! Welcome to Game Time presented by Geeskate. I'm your host, Anessa Gamble. Our goal is to promote diabetes awareness within the athletic community through a series of interviews. And today we're talking to Melinda Prevost. So hi, my name is Melinda Prevost. I'm 25 years old and I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at 11 years old. Um, I grew up in Montreal and I played hockey my whole entire life. How did you get involved in hockey? So I got involved in hockey because my younger brother started playing. I actually started playing basketball with my sister first, and then I saw my brother on the ice, and I was like, this is what I want to do. So then the following year, my parents signed me up for hockey. How did, like, who did you play? Like, what was your journey? Um, Where did you end up? So I grew up uh, playing minor hockey in Montreal. Then for high school, I went to prep school at Vermont Academy. And then for university, I played for the Concordia Stingers. Awesome. Um, you were also drafted by the Lacadiennes in the Canadian Women's Hockey League. Um, can you uh, tell me a little bit of what it was like to be drafted or play with them a bit? Yes. Yeah, so I was drafted to the Canadian for um, a year before I started playing for the Concordia Stingers. And it was an unreal experience it was an absolute blast to be on the ice with some of the best female hockey players like Marie Philip Poulet, Caroline Noirette, Julie Chu, Charlie Labonte they were all on the team that year so it was quite intimidating but I definitely learned a lot from them yeah uh I remember like playing the C-dub as well like just going against I remember being at a face-off with Poulet and I'm just like holy like hi and then I'm like oh no I actually have to play like I was just so starstruck um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, even too okay. like playing for this like Concordia. What was it like to be like, you know, having your coaches and be involved with like Julie Chu and and Ouellette? My God, like I don't have words. <laughs> what it was like being on the ice with Julie Chu and Carol. Like they have so much knowledge for the game. They pick up on every, every little tiny detail. So. Um, it was hard work, definitely. Like you have to work hard, you have to earn your spot. But man, like it was an amazing takeaway. Like I, best coaches in the world. If you have the opportunity to go to Concordia, go to Concordia. <laughs> it was so much fun. Yeah, yeah. It's like so neat of like going through like uh, undergrad or even to like your pro career and 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 like just continuously learning like. I know a lot of my teammates are Olympians and they're just always talking to each other about like, how can they improve their game and looking at those little details. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, no, Julie took a lot of time to help coach us and get better at every minor detail. Um, and when we got better, she'd push us to get even better. We'd always do like video with her to make sure like position plays, how to see the game better. Like obviously, they're Olympians like they they know so much so it definitely helped us improve our game and they definitely turned the program around at Concordia. So I'm going to go back in your career um, and you you mentioned you went to prep school and um, I don't know if it's a similar situation but I, I played guys hockey throughout my life and I went to boarding school too but the big factor was that because we didn't have girls hockey so what was it like being probably one of the only girls in your team and then, you know, leaving to go into prep school? Actually, being the only girl on my team only went up through maybe Peewee, and then I switched over to girls hockey in Peewee. Um, I didn't mind being the only girl on my team. I was kind of always one of the boys. I had short hair when I was younger, too. So I never found it hard being the only girl on my team or anything like that. When I was a kid, all my friends were boys. So I kind of liked it <laughs> <laughs> what was it like going to boarding school um and then to like with your diabetes management so I went to boarding school I was turning 16 that year 
Um, so in terms of my diabetes management, obviously like everyone at the school in terms of like teachers and nurses, whatever knew about my diabetes. Um, but I was always pretty independent with my diabetes. So luckily nothing bad has ever happened. Um, kind of hard to control sometimes. You're still young, you're on your own, you're eating whatever you want. But, but I always try to be on top of it, and especially in terms of being an athlete. If you're on top of your diabetes, it'll help you perform better. And I went to boarding school to play hockey, so I always wanted to be like strict with my diabetes, so it never got in the way with anything. Um, what about like now, like when afterwards, even going to your grad, undergrad, do you have any tips for anyone managing their diabetes and athletic performance? My biggest tip for someone managing their diabetes and athletic performance is to be on top of their blood sugars and monitor as much as you can. If you're wearing a t- continuous glucose monitor or the freestyle, like pick up on trends, pay attention to patterns of what makes you go high, what makes you go low. Um, if you're testing your blood, test often. This is going to help you stay in range longer. It's going to help you perform better, get on the ice in range. You're going to have a better game. Um, and then it's going to help you recover better when you're in range as well. Like often for me, I was always higher after hockey, um, which I'm sure is the case for many hockey players. So the recovery after that, like is super important to get you back in range, but then also to be aware of like the risk of hypoglycemia after hockey. Um, you want a good night's rest. You don't want to wake up low or anything. So monitor as much as you can, understand how your body reacts to the sport, to certain foods. For me personally, I hated having like a big carb meal after hockey because I was already high. That it, was, it really made me fight the hyperglycemia even more. So it was like harder for me to recover. Um, but I'm sure some people do have pasta after hockey, for example. So it's just like finding what works for you because obviously we know with diabetes is not the same for everyone. So just pay attention, be diligent, and it's going to help you thrive as an athlete. Yeah. I love the point you make at the end of, you know, your hyperglycemia post hockey game. Uh, I know like on road trips, you'll definitely get pizza or carbs and you're trying your best to replenish your glycogen storage and recovery. Mm -hmm. But with your blood sugars, like that is like danger zone. Um, so that's like such a great point of like finding what works for you and making sure you're refueling and like taking care of yourself, but also like tailoring it for your diabetes. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I actually spoke to my coach Julie about that, like, because I was finding it hard and lucky enough, like they would order me something a bit different, uh, than the team if they were to have like pizza or something after the game. So I was lucky when it came to my diabetes, like people supported me throughout. So that's so nice. That's that's what makes a team for sure. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And you know what? Actually, D skate taught me something huge. I never used to wear my pump during hockey. And then at D skate, all these kids were on the ice with their pumps, and I was like, "Are you crazy? What are you doing?" <laughs> and then I started wearing my wearing my pump when I played in practice, and my blood my blood sugars were a lot better. Um, I was still a bit high but I was not as high and I felt better on the ice and everything so I know like girls who don't play contact hockey so it's not a big deal and maybe like for guys who play contact hockey like it's not realistic to wear the pump but if you can try it out try it out and practice see how you like it yeah I I agree with that I, I wear my pump now and it was just from the education I got Uh, of learning and even like too with like uh, great research out of York with Mike Riddell and Desi Mm -hmm. Zahara is you know adjusting basal rates and uh, doing that pre that during and that post and not treating a game the same as a practice because they're two different energy systems that you're using and um, I think like just educating yourself and then trial and erroring makes a huge difference big time yeah yeah, but you exemplify. You you work out all the time. Like I, oh, I no. always watch you. I'm like, man, she's she's like fit. <laughs> what is your favorite hockey moment? My favorite hockey moment would definitely be with the Concordia Stingers, uh, winning the RSEQ championship, so it's our like provincial championship. 
and going to nationals two years in a row. The first year we placed fourth, and the third, uh, second year we placed third. So that was an absolutely amazing moment. Welcome back to D Skate Game Time with Vanessa Gamble. Today we're talking with Melinda Prebos. So uh, we're going to talk about COVID nineteen and social distancing in this period. So how has the pandemic impacted your life so far? The pandemic has impacted my life. Well, I work at a gym as a trainer, so I haven't been working since mid-March. Um, I've still been in contact with my clients, but I obviously haven't seen them face-to-face, and I miss them very much. Uh, in terms of school, everything was moved online. So we had about two weeks of like nothing, really, when they were figuring stuff out. Uh, but... Then I was able to complete my school exams or still the date that they had originally planned to be. So the guild did a pretty good job in not um, delaying anything. Um, I'm supposed to be leaving for Greece in a couple of days, but that's not happening. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like I'm a bit on pause when it comes to like work, but school still advancing. So. How have you, you know, kind of on pause, but all, like you're still working, you're kind of, you're doing your research. Um, how are you adapting to it? Um, how have I adapted to social distancing in the pandemic? Uh, I bought a whole bunch of gym equipment to keep me sane. Um, I'm using a lot of Zoom and Skype and everything. Luckily, I live with my girlfriend, so that helps a lot. Uh, but I definitely miss my friends. We've been kind of like hanging out from afar. Uh, but Montreal is absolutely amazing in the summer. And like everything is obviously canceled in terms of like sports and festivals. So that's a bit of a bummer. But, you know, like I try and still obviously be positive about it. It could be worse. Luckily, on my side, everyone's healthy. So... Like I, I can't really complain. That's good. Um, you talk about training at home um, mm-hmm. and, you know, doing the Zooms. Has your diabetes been impacted throughout this? My diabetes has been amazing. <laughs> um, I made it a goal of mine to really, like, use this time to, like, change any of my basal rates, my carb ratios, whatever. Um, because like now is the time that we can, um, you know, if if we need a fast to change our basils, we can, you know what I mean? So I've been writing down everything, really paying attention to my trends and like eating and measuring what I eat at time to count everything. Um, so yeah, my, my diabetes has actually been really good and I'm hoping to carry that over when life goes back to normal and my busy lifestyle afterwards. Yeah, it's totally like a pre-game, like pre-season training that, Mm -hmm. you know, you're really training of, you know, your diabetes and getting on those habits, uh, especially with Mm -hmm. carb counting. I am the, I'm really bad at carb counting and (laughs) um, just like making that, like that, that thinking of like how many carbs am I eating and weighing it or like measuring it. Um, Mm -hmm. That's a really great point you make. So upcoming, how is your schooling going to be impacted? Uh, School will be impacted by moving online still. Um, So far, they haven't exactly told us all the details, but it's sounding like more or less everything will be online in terms of my classes. I know some people who like have internships or stages like or labs might be more in person, but I think in terms of like, lectures it'll mostly be online that's that's good do you have a lot of courses this uh this upcoming semester yeah i have uh two courses and then like all my master's work so it'll still be busy um luckily no travel time to school though so yeah, yeah. um can you quickly say what you're studying in school so i'm studying a master's in human nutrition right now um i'm doing a thesis in diabetes, um, more so on exercise. So my thesis is going to be looking at the perceived barriers to physical activity and the number of strategies people with diabetes use to prevent hypoglycemia and comparing that between genders. So two of the most common strategies are either to 
increase carbohydrate intake around exercise or reduce um, your insulin needs. So I'm going to be like seeing obviously if there's other strategies and how often men use these strategies and how often women use these strategies and see if there's any differences. Um, Because for example, if women don't like taking in extra carbohydrates, well then we need to adopt recommendations to prevent hypoglycemia for them. Or if men like have something different, so it's like, what is, there's so much research out there that are these patients using it and what are they actually using? You know, like they might say like, this is the best recommendation to prevent hypo, but if they don't like using it and they're using something else, so how could we work with them to figure something out that works and that they like? Welcome back to D-Skate Game Time with Vanessa Gamble. Today we're talking with Melinda Prevost. So can you just tell me again what you're studying and what you're up to today? So I did my undergraduate degree in kinesiology at Concordia University, and now I'm doing my master's at McGill University in the School of Human Nutrition. I'm working on a research project with Dr. Anne-Sophie Prazo that's going to be looking at um, the perceived barriers to physical activity and the number of strategies used to prevent uh, physical activity-related hypoglycemia in people with type 1 diabetes and comparing uh, genders. So I want to see if women and men use different strategies to prevent hypoglycemia around exercise. Nice. For you, what is it like studying diabetes and exercise while being uh, an athlete with diabetes? Yeah, so studying diabetes and exercise while being a type 1 athlete is interesting. I'm still learning a lot. Uh, there's so much to learn about this disease and it's so complex. Um, I definitely wish I knew now what I knew growing up playing hockey um, in terms of controlling my diabetes to be a better athlete. But, you know, I'm still training now. I actually ref hockey now at the university level and hope to move up to that. So I'm still able to um, apply what I'm learning now into my life and hopefully teach others with type one little tricks that I've learned. Yeah. I, I always get jealous too of like, I didn't have any of this information when I was mm-hmm. growing up and also like technology. I never had a continuous glucose monitor. Yeah. Um, and just like a little bit angry of like, I would have been such a better athlete. And I definitely see it after undergrad when I started learning all this and I started applying mm-hmm. it. Um, like how much better my physical performance was and how much better I felt um, both physically and mentally. So I think like it's mm-hmm. really important to like, you know, teach people these at a young age so they can really perform their best of their abilities. Yeah, it's super important. And you know, when I was growing up, I was kind of always a little bit stubborn and like I did things in my way. Uh, but the human body works how the human body wants to work. And like we need to learn as people with diabetes to like use diabetes to our advantage and prep like preparation is key especially as a type one athlete um so we want to learn and we want to apply what's out there so you know like i used to hate meeting with dietitians and stuff but like looking back on it i regret like not like taking in all that knowledge and applying it then but you know when you're like 15 16 like the last thing you want to do yeah yeah I was definitely stubborn too. Um, yeah. And to the way that the information's presented, you know, like how can we knowledge translate this in a better way that's more applicable? Um, yeah, and useful? Like, yeah. Yeah. Instead of like sitting in another class, like make it like sport related, make it like, like, you know what I mean? Make it interesting for the patient, depending on what their interest is, like apply it to their real life. Not just like, this is, 15 grams of carbs. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's, I, I love like Descape for that reason is like you're uh, learning amazing. doing it. And mm-hmm. j- it, it's so different of like listening to it than actually applying it and then seeing people around you do the exact same thing. Um, mm-hmm. It makes it fun and then it makes it stick. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What really excites you in the future of what could be in the diabetes and exercise research field? What excites me is like finding out more answers that we don't know. 
Um, like diabetes, like I said, is very complex and it's different for every person. Uh, so actually like one of my favorite quotes about diabetes, it's funny. They say like, you know, the cool like insanity is doing the same thing every day and expecting change. Yeah. Well, like diabetes has a little twist on it and it's like insanity is doing the same thing every day and always getting different results and change, you know what I mean? So um, because there's such a variety of factors that impact your blood glucose and everything, like I want to learn more and like try and really help individualize um, strategies and recommendations for people to start exercising more and not to be afraid of exercise with type one, because obviously, like I said, hypoglycemia is a big risk for type ones when they exercise. And some people might be reluctant to start exercising because of hypoglycemia, but they shouldn't see it as a barrier because they should have the knowledge and the strategies and the confidence to be able to prevent that from happening yeah if we have more out there maybe people will want to like pick up more activities and start being more active because they won't fear hypo yeah that that is like so important and the fact of like it's not just the fact of going low during exercise. I think it's like the diabetes distress of that fear of hypoglycemia and that mm-hmm. beha- like that knowledge, that behavior will make you probably not want to exercise again or approach it differently. So I think having mm-hmm. that support um, is so needed uh, across mm-hmm. fields, if you're an athlete or non-athlete, because it, mm-hmm. it is so important for your overall health. Um, so I'm really excited for you to keep doing that because it's so important. So one thing is uh, you're located in Quebec right now. And to my understanding, some of your research using the Better Registry. So Mm -hmm. can you explain what the Better Registry is? Yeah, so the Better Registry is a Quebec-based study. It's an online questionnaire that covers a variety of diabetes topics. Um, The goal of the study is to determine the frequency and severity of hypoglycemia and to help lower these rates. So I'm actually using part of the Better Registry for my own project. So the questions about physical activity in the Better Registry, I'll be analyzing that data. Uh, So for anyone with type 1 living in Quebec, please go to type1better.com, 1, the number 1, and fill out the questionnaires, please. It would help a lot. Yeah. I think a really neat thing is is with that registry, it's not just your study. It is so many yeah. PIs. Um, yeah, 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 it's huge. It's, it's huge. a big study. Yeah. It covers so much. It's, I mean, like the goal is to have everyone in Quebec register to it. Um, mm-hmm. And that would help us get a better number of how many type ones are in Quebec. Or, and eventually I know our PIs want to, like open it up to all of Canada, you know, we don't, we have no idea how many type ones are in Canada, you know? Yeah. I think that's something we don't realize is that um, we have no idea. And so it's really mm-hmm. hard to even get like supplies coverage um, mm-hmm. from like higher up because we're just kind of fabricating these numbers due to like estimates. And so if mm-hmm. we're able to provide that evidence base of like, we really need insulin covered because of this or like continuous glucose monitors and this, and this is the evidence why I think those little steps of just like literally filling out a questionnaire on, you know, registry is going to make such a bigger impact. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I, growing up, I always kind of saw like, okay, I have diabetes. How can I help other people with diabetes? Honestly, like research as lame as it might sound like growing up, I was like research, but, it helps. It's going to help in the future, like finding out these answers. It's going to help the next generation of people with diabetes have better control and better access. And so it's, research is important, yeah, for sure. <laughs> One last question. Uh, what evidence-based tips do you have for diabetes athletes? In terms of evidence-based tips, I would just say, again, my biggest tip is to monitor your blood sugar. You know what I mean? Um, if you know what your blood's at, you're not guessing. Mm-hmm. It would give your mind a break too, instead of like getting on the ice, like oh, I don't know what blood's at versus getting on the ice. Okay, I'm at seven, let's go. Um, 
and then it's like if you get on the ice and you're at 17 like yeah you could still have a good game but you won't be performing at your peak performance so okay what made me get this high I'm not gonna do it again or like oh I'm low you know what I mean so it's monitor like it's the easiest thing yeah yeah we all hate that but yeah it makes such a big difference so it definitely does Thanks for tuning in to DSkate Presents Game Time, Episode 3 with Melinda Prevos. Our thanks to Melinda for stopping by. Be sure to follow Melinda on Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget, like and subscribe to Game Time for more sports and diabetes content. On behalf of the DSkate team, I'm Vanessa Gamble. See you at Puck Drop for the next episode of Game Time. <laughs> <laughs>